talk about is the input bias current. Now this one uh, actually also getting more important. Uh, when we go to MOSFET, right, the metal oxide semiconductor, our gate has infinite input impedance, very large input impedance. It was a big problem when it was in the BJT time, bipolar <laughs> junction transistor, right, because the base has a large current. But nowadays the gate oxide becomes thinner and thinner, they have leakage again. So what you say is that we keep saying that the input impedance is supposed to be infinity, so there will be no current going into the gate. But in reality, there's still some tiny current, okay? So what will be the problem? For example, I hook up this circuit, right? Without the, uh, this is the ideal of M. And this is the long ideal one. This is the real one, right? So with ideal of M, this is what? An inverting or long inverting amplifier? Huh? The input is here, output. What is that? Long inverting, right? Because the input is here, right? So I expect We expect what? V out equal to zero when V in equal to zero, right? But because of this uh, biasing current, not biasing, the leakage current at the gate, right? That is how we model it. Maybe I, I forgot to mention. When you talk about the offset voltage, I put a voltage source there, VOS, right? Now, in order to model the leakage in the gate, I put some current source here, okay? Now, what happened to this? Now, this is a very good circuit exercise. Let's look at this. What is the potential? Uh, I kind of lost also. Do we have any current going into here? Going into the negative terminal. No, right? Because this is ideal, right? I think it's confusing, but again, within the ideal domain, everything is ideal. We just have this additional model to model that it is not ideal, right? So this is zero because it's, it has infinite output impedance. Okay. So where does IB2 go? This is going to be IB2, right? Because whatever come here, we we'll go to here. Is that okay? Now this one got jumped to here. This is called Vx. Then let's study what happened, right? So use KCL. We have V out minus Vx divided by R1. Uh, as and I forgot one thing, sorry. Uh, uh, maybe I just keep going. V out minus with the R1 equal to what? Can someone tell? Just KCL. This is the current, right? V out minus Vx divided by R1 equals to? IP2 plus Vx over R2. Just KCL at this point. Make sense? But there's something I just got nervous, forgot, and now I realize is that what is Vx? Vx is this point, which is this point, which is this V minus. Do I know what is V minus actually? No. You could assume that. What, someone say zero. Why it is zero? Because V is zero, so V plus is zero. Why V plus zero? Then what? What was the relationship between them? Virtual ground, virtual shock, right? Yeah, because S V plus equal to zero and virtual shot, right? This is something I always overlook. Right? So with this, I'm not going to prove it, 
I mean, log proof, I don't need to write it because we x is zero. This is zero. So we zero divided by r1 equal to ib2, right? Basically, think the current just go through here. Is that okay? Because this point is zero. That's why the v out is r1 times ib2, right? It just put in zero. You see that v out equal to r1 times ib2. So even I don't have any inputs, even I don't have offset voltage, I still have a finite output because of IB2, right? So if you want to improve the accuracy, you want to reduce R1, okay? Yeah. Where are the two ground terminals in the real amp portion connected to? Ground terminal, what, what do you mean by ground terminal? Uh, so you have the green circle, say yeah. the real op amp, the two ground terminals. Where are they connected to? Like the oh, uh, okay. So yeah, uh, you don't really connect. This is just a model. Try try to model saying that uh, there will be currents going out into this terminal. So you don't really connect something to it. Okay, but then in that case, shouldn't I B one or I B two one of them be in reverse? Because it has to go from plus to negative or negative. Okay. Uh, it depends. Actually, IB1, IB2 depends on the bias. They are not like going in and then going out to each other. Okay. And also, they don't need to. Uh, I mean, here we have a symbol. It can positive can be positive or negative. Yeah. So this is a rather uh, how to say? It's not a very uh, accurate model, we just say that in general, this is uh, IB1 and IB2. But IB1, IB2 can depend on the bias uh, and also, uh, yeah, depend on the bias. So they are not related to each other uh, in a simple way. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Okay, then let's go to the another long ideality, which is the relating to the bandwidth. Okay, so up to now we keep talking about the gain, right? A we have V out. Now I'm going to add a uh, zero to it. Uh, v plus minus V minus. This is the DC gain. We did not talk about how it respond to the frequency. But in reality, it depends on the frequency. And this is one way to model it. I think you will agree this is a good way, right? Because you first have a constant gain at low frequency. When we reach the high frequency, it will what? Start dropping, right? If you forgot what it really means, right? Let's look at two regions. This, let's say this is what region one. So in region one, right? Uh, your V in in the time domain and V out in the time domain is like this. I have a sine wave going in, right, at low frequency. Then I have a high gain. This is not a good job. Okay, and this gain is A, right? What if you go to region two? What happened? Right, this is one, and then we go to two. What happened? I still, I have a larger frequency, higher frequency with the same amplitude, right? But what, what is the output? Right, the output will be also high frequency, but smaller amplitude, right? And what is meaning when we go to region three? Yeah, you have some very high frequency, same amplitude, but your output is going to be, cannot draw it. Doesn't allow me to draw. Yeah, and uh, yeah. it's going to lose everything. <laughs>
So I will just say smaller amplitude for now, right? I, my pen has a lot of problem. But but just want to review this. What is the meaning of this body pot? Uh, do you have this picture in your mind? Right? This is frequency, low frequency. You have this gain. For high, high frequency, you have smaller gain. For even higher, you even have a smaller amplitude. Okay? So from here, what is the pole of this circuit? Remember how to find the pole? You set what? Set what to zero? Yes. Set the denominator to zero, right? So then the pole equals to negative omega 1, right? This is the pole. And let's look at a concept called unity gain bandwidth. It is at which, which is called omega u, right? It is when the gain has a magnitude equal to, zero, to 1. So here it's saying that when I keep increasing the frequency, eventually the output will be equal to the input. That is the unity gain. Okay, so at which frequency does it reach the uh, one? So let's just plug in, right? We have the equation A0 divided by one plus J omega divided by omega one. Omega one is the pole, remember, equals to one. Okay, so this equal to A, A0 itself is just the magnitude, and then I just the magnitude of a complex number is just the square root of 1 plus omega divided by omega 1 squared, right? The magnitude of complex number is just the real part square plus the imaginary part square, and you take the square root, right? And I multiply this to here. Just go through the complex uh, math. I have this, right? But uh, at this point, I should actually call this omega to be omega u because it's the unity gain, this is the frequency at which it gives you one, right? So I should also call this u, yeah? The point is that u, omega u, is much larger than omega one, right? Because this is the pole, and this is the unity gain. So it roll off, it will be much larger than omega one, 10 times, 20 times, uh, 100 times or something, right? So as a result, a actually is approximately equal to omega u divided by omega 1. Why? Because this one is approximately equal to omega u divided by omega 1 squared. As 1 can be neglect, neglected, right? Because omega u divided by omega 1 is very large, so its square is much larger than 1. So this one can be neglected. That's why this becomes omega u divided by omega 1, right? And we then have this unity gain frequency equal to A0 times omega 1. So this is almost nothing to do with the op m, but just take this opportunity to review the unity gain again, right? But that's nothing. The, 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 the overall the, uh, story is that your op amp has frequency response due to the capacitance. So do not expect you have a constant gain. It actually will roll off with the omic of the frequency. A higher frequency has a lower gain. And two of the characteristic uh, frequency is the pole, the 3 dB, negative 3 dB gain, and the unity gain. Right? So you know that if you reach unity gain, you are not doing gaining anything. There's no gain at all. Your open is completely useless. Right? So okay, any questions? Okay. Now that is the bandwidth. But here I want to introduce another thing called the slew rate. The slew rate is not really the bandwidth. It is about this. Now, I have an op amp here, a circuit amplifier. This gain is going to be 
negative. Uh, this is not negative. One plus R1 divided by R2V in, right? Because this is a long inverting amplifier. Now, if I apply a pulse to delta V, okay, then my output here, I expect to have delta V times 1 plus R1 divided by R2. Correct? Because that is the gain of the output. Well, if I apply 2 delta V, it's going to be 2 delta V times 1 plus R1 divided by R2. Right? Whatever I go in, just multiply by that number. It does. It does multiply. The problem is when my input voltage is large instead of small, it also scale up accordingly. If I call this delta V dash, this delta V dash, then this is still 2 delta V dash times 1 plus R1 divided by R2. And this is still delta V dash times 1 plus R1 divided by R2. I still have the correct gain. It still do the right calculation. But however, look at this. When the input is small, uh, when I have a larger input, it actually go up faster. But when the input magnitude is large, they overlap and it takes longer time to go to the answer. So if you look at this, right, it takes longer time to reach the answer. Now think about this. Your result is still correct, right? There's nothing to do with the bandwidth. Look at this bandwidth. If I go to this frequency, my result is wrong already because the gain is lower. But here I still have the correct gain eventually. It's just that it takes longer time to reach there. Okay? And that is the so-called slew rate problem. It is the maximum range we can change the output uh, the output of the op amp. Why? Because all op amp must be built by some current, effectively some current source. And this current source is going to charge some loading capacitor. Your op amp is ideal if your current source is said, I'm going to fill up the reservoir, right, with a pipe. I can always fill up the reservoir to the value I want, to the level I want. But my pipe is narrow. I don't have much water flow. I can make it larger, then it will be faster. But however, it's limited. I can not always go up at infinite speed, right? That is because that is just like the current source limitation, right? So what is the V out? V out equal to C, I mean, well, yeah, Q over V equal to C, right? As I told you last time, right? Q, the, the A put on the cup, right? Equal to C. Q over V equal to C. So this is Q divided by C. Q is the charge on the capacitor. What is Q? Q is the integration of the... Uh, Currents, right? So what is dv out dt? Which means for a given time, how fast you can charge up the voltage. This is just equal to I over C. Do you see that? And this is the slew rate. How fast I can change it? Right? For every second, how much voltage I can bring it up. It really depends on the current. It's just like the reservoir and analogy. How fast I can fill up the pond? Uh, how fast it can raise the water level? It depends on the capacitor, means how wide your reservoir is, and also depends on the pipe that I have, how fast I can fill in the water. I'm a hardworking guy. I promise you eventually I will fill up to the level that you want. 
but my pipe, the I zero is really small. It takes me a long time, right? So that is the slew rate problem. So it is not the same as the bandwidth, right? But it will limit the highest frequency that you can operate. Why is that? Let's look at this figure. Okay, this is just a, a slew rate, so um, I won't continue. I won't repeat, right? This is what I said already. Now, if I have an input, I, if my input, I have a sine wave, the output is supposed to be a sine wave also, right? Because what should be the output? The output, again, this is a long inverting amplifier. So the V out must be equals to V in times one plus R1 divided by R2. So okay. It's just that this time is more complicated. The V in is a sine wave. So it is V out, V O, V O is not V out now, right? V O is this amplitude, right? Times sine omega T times one plus R1 divided by R2. Is this okay? Is this clear to you? The output is the input times the gain, right? And the input this time is a sine wave. V zero sine omega t. So I expect my output is also a sine wave, right? Your input is low, output is low, input is high, output is high, right? With some gain. What is the rate of change of the output? dv out dt. You just do a math, right? dv out dt, v0 is constant, I keep it. 1 plus r1 divided by r1 is r2 is constant also, right? It does not depend on time. I keep it. What is d sine omega t dt? Do you remember? Cosine? Omega t, what else? You need to add omega, very good, right? So just review the differentiate. Differentiates cosine omega t dt. Uh, differentiate sine omega dt is omega uh, cosine, right? This one also change with time, but it has a maximum value, right? It's just saying that the rate of change of the output, right? How fast I fill up and uh, remove water from the reservoir, the, uh, the water level, it change. Sometimes it change very fast, sometimes very small, slow. What is the highest rate? What is the maximum rate that it can have? Just this one. This is when cosine omega t equal to one, right? When cosine omega t equal to one, then I get the maximum rate. So basically it's saying that if you have a sine wave goes in, your output is going to be a sine wave, but it has a maximum rate of change at certain location of this. That is this output. At this point. This point has the maximum dv out dt, right? At this point, the voltage changed the fastest, right? Because you're zoom, right? Going from negative to positive, or from positive to negative. It just say at this point, my reservoir, uh, the water level will fluctuate the fastest, right? It go up very fast. How can I get it go up very fast? I need to pour up enough current to it, right? water current. Same here, how can I make the output voltage to go up fast? I need to have enough strength, enough currents to charge the output capacitor. Yeah? But do I have? That depends on the design of your op amp. And that depends on the slew rate of your op amp, right? So you will need to have the slew rate larger than the d v out d t, which is v zero one plus r one divided by r two omega. 
in order to have no distortion because if I'm too slow in filling up, I cannot catch what I'm supposed to do. Okay? As a result, I have this distortion in the black line. Then your signal is no longer a size sine wave. Right? So this real rate then force you to have this constraint. Your omega needs to be smaller than the slew rate of your trans of your op m divided by one plus r one divided by r two divided by v out. Right. So you cannot operate your circuit at a too high a frequency. If it is too high, you just cannot follow be because your op m is not ideal. Right? Just now you asked me to change the water level uh, by 100 times in one second. I cannot because my water pipe is too uh, narrow. It cannot pour that much water to follow you. So I cannot follow the instruction. So my maximum operating frequency may be I can change the water level every hour. That may be the best I can do. And here may be I can only operates on a frequency by 100 hertz because my slew rate cannot meet the criteria you want. And this criteria depends on how much you want to swing V0 and also the gain. Okay. Any questions? A what wave? Oh, uh... I, yeah, if you re intentionally reduce it, but unfortunately at this tip, right, the 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 slew, the, the rate change is almost zero. Then you always have some uh, curve at the top. It's not ideal. Yeah, uh, but that's a good good suggestion to reduce rate to have a soft tooth. Okay. The last law ideality we want to discuss about is the output impedance, but I'm not going to derive it. I just let you know that, right? This is an ideal of M. So how do we uh, model it? We will say, okay, uh, we have an output impedance here. Okay. Then this whole thing will be the real one or long ideal one, right? And after that, outside of here, then we will hook up, for example, R1, right, V out. We grind it, R2, V in, right? So that is how to do uh, modeling. And you can try to derive it yourself by using KCL, KVL. Just realize that it has finite output impedance, okay? So we are done with the op-amp. Here are some videos I actually encourage